So I, I love this debate because it's basically the dreamers against the realists, right? So, <laughs> so, so one of the issues is that we'd all like a swimming pool in our back garden, right? But uh, in the cold, hard reality of healthcare, uh, things are rather different. So I'm going to um, argue against the motion. Now, let's face it. Uh, uh, TB preventative therapy isn't going to end the, uh, the TB epidemic. Here we are now. Even if we optimize all the, the stuff we've got, it's, we're going to keep going down and we're not going to end the TB epidemic for a long, long time. Uh, and I, none of us in the room will be alive at that time that it goes, even if we optimize what goes on. So, and if we do even less than that, it's going to be forever. So we have to do something new. There has to be something uh, about uh, with vaccines, etc., to try and get there. So I'm afraid that even if you do all this stuff, you're going to be waiting a long, long time uh, for any result. Now, even you, it says everybody, but even WHO have priority groups. Uh, so HIV, and of course, you know, it's chronic renal disease, etc. Uh, but HIV patients are one of that. So let's look at just this one group. Let's just make it easy for them and limit the debate around HIV. Okay, it does work to an extent, okay? So here we are, standard prophylaxis, enhanced prophylaxis in patients uh, in, in the reality study. And in the enhanced prophylaxis, they were given... Um, anti-TB treatment, and they did reduce the risk of developing TB by doing it. But did it eliminate it? No. And there's another study from South Africa which actually shows that uh, you, uh, in 1,400 patients, they had uh, 58 patients who were on the um, uh, placebo group and 38 patients who develop TB on the isoniazid group. So actually, even doing this, you are not going to make the massive impact everybody thinks is going to happen without doing anything else. And actually, what about giving antiretroviral therapy, which we know in HIV reduces the risk of developing TB by at least 80%. So if you have to give both, you remember Actually, the priority is giving ART. If you want to put all the resources into uh, giving IPT, you can. But what about making sure that people do that? And here's the region, okay? The 90-90 target, this is how far away you already are, and there's only a year to go. So what about the global uptake, where people have been trying to do this all over the planet? Here we are. Global uptake has gone up a bit. But actually, it's really quite slow, right? So it's basically South Africa is the only country that's actually starting to implement this in any sort of way, um, and other parts of Africa. The rest of the world is doing it. So you've got a big way to catch up, OK? So even though you might have a big plan, let's give it to everybody, when it comes to physicians uh, and uh, the clinical services delivering it, it's not going anywhere at the moment. But actually, what you really need to do is think about this as only as a part of the strategy and not as your main thrust. It's really essential to find the cases. If you just give people IPT, right, you will do something, I've said. But if you don't find the active cases and treat the active cases, you will keep the epidemic going. And therefore, how do you do that? Well, it's great if you've got rapid diagnostics, which we heard about from one of our, the opponents uh, this morning, if they're available and cheap. But otherwise, you've got to use a symptom score. Data from South Africa shows that people on antiretroviral, the symptom score uh, is, is quite specific, but it's not sensitive. In people not on a, a, a antiretrovirals, we still got, it still lacks sensitivity and specificity. So we have to do something about finding cases. Another one is infection control. And this is a big issue for those of you that work in healthcare centers because there's a concern that when you put TB and HIV services together so that you can give IPT, you might start uh, increasing transmission. We saw that in South Africa with MDR-TB outbreaks, and we've seen that elsewhere. We described outbreaks in the 1990s uh, in our own unit in the, in the UK because of putting people together. Right. 
And there's plenty of evidence about this transmission, uh, and we need to do something about uh, TB infection prevention and control. So the other thing is, is that we really have got to do this. We've got to have everything provided together. So if you just want to give IPT to these people, you've got to make sure, as I say, you give art. If you co-locate all this, you've got to make sure you've got good prevention control, and you've got to find all the cases. So if you want to just go and do this, give IPT to everybody, then I think you're going to end up with just TB services doing it. They'll get, gather strength because they'll be giving you funding to do all this, and the integration, the, the universal health coverage will suffer. But in the end, the TB isn't just a case of giving out pills. TB is not just saying, let's give IP, uh, let's give uh, prophylaxis to everybody. T TB should actually, uh, and that's not an answer to politicians, right? That is one way of trying to deal with it, but the, uh, the, the real way you talk to politicians is TB is an issue of poverty, it's an issue of human rights, it's an issue of social injustice. And we can use integrated service delivery health models to help with that, but programs in isolation, as suggested by the opposition here, I think are doomed to failure. Uh, we need universal, so, uh, a degree of universal health care. We need funders to focus on this. We need to tackle all of these issues. <clears throat> and we have to have political interest rather than some strategy which is pills and money. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much. I'd like to